Alright, tools. You're going to need an 8mm open ended, 10mm open ended, 10mm socket with extension and ratchet, short extension, flatbed screwdriver, a lever of some sort, and a 32mm spanner or inch and a quarter the same size for the viscous fan. Of course, on this one I haven't got the trims fitted. You'll probably have a trim to move from here, which I believe is Allen bolts. Mine haven't been fitted since I've owned the vehicle. Right, to get to the water pump we need to get the viscous and the thermostat, we need to get the viscous fan out of the way. To get the viscous fan off we need to get the fan shroud off. To get the fan shroud out of the way we need to disconnect the radiator pipes. We also need to remove the brackets for the washer bottle and power steering fluid reservoir because the plastic body will not lift with those still fitted. There is a drain plug at the base of most radiators if you bother to use it. I'm not going to bother, I'm just going to take the, disconnect the pipes at the top and just make a mess on the floor regardless. Right, first job then is going to be loosen off these. If you've got a ratchet ring, all the better. You can see what I'm doing. So I'll do a fancy transition bit and I'll be all off. Right. Magic reverse in, there we go, disconnected, so able to float around. Might as well get the fun bit out of the way, undoing that bloody uh, viscous coupling. It's a reverse thread. You need your big boy spanner. It's a focus. We also need to stop the poly from rotating, so if you just try and do it normally, it's going to turn everything. So I use a really cheap rubbish tire lever. To get in, fizzle focus, and set the spanner out of the way. So try to wedge in between the bolt head and the rotation of the shaft in the middle itself. I only two hands for this, so I'll have to uh, disappear for a moment. Well, I cracked mine loose. You see there, the well, you can't see it's turning with it, but it is loose. I haven't taken it all the way off. There we go. Yet, because I don't want it bashing into the radiator. You'll probably have a fight with that because it probably hasn't been off in years. Mine's been off fairly recently and I also greased it when I put it together. Right, next stage is to get the cowl itself out of the way. First of all, remove the clips. You do not want to lose these. They won't come off as easy as that. Mine's obviously alloy radiator is a little bit different. So, open your boot. And stick them in there nice and safe along with the rest of the bit as you take them off. That way you don't have to panic later when you can't find the bloody things. Right, next it's going to be the hose clamps. Right, clamps are undone. There is a drain plug at the bottom radiator if you choose to use it. I'm just being lazy making a mess on the top. And yes, it is water antifreeze. It's only for testing the flow through the radiator. Twisting helps. Let's put the pipes back out of the way. And after allow this wobbly thing to come out, which has to come out with the viscous fan. So obviously they hold each other in place. The bottom of the fan shroud is just located by a couple of plastic pegs going into holes in the, ra in the radiator bracket. Should have shown that before I made the bottom all wet, but I'll show you when I pull it out. Right, need two hands again, so have to wait. And obviously unwind the fan the rest of the way. Watching as the third one's out, so doesn't fall into the radiator and damage the core. One moment. Right, that's all loose. Kept it away from the radiator core. It is going to catch on bloody everything trying to pull the whole lot out and it might get a little bit stuck at the bottom of the uh, power steering pipes. It's been a little bit tight against it, but it will wiggle out. Again, two ends. And it's out. There's the plastic pegs. That engage and those little brackets down there, they're slotting them out of it. It goes to the boot. Right, now that's clear. 
So thermostat housing with one, two, three bolts, 10 mil. And that's the water pump pulley with four 10 mil socket bolts. And this one here is the heater pipe, which is held in with a slightly smaller bolt, single, in the same area as a bolt for this. So don't do the wrong one, because if you disturb the pipe, yeah, it'll probably leak. Well, the manual actually tells you to remove this pipe before removing the thermostat. I wouldn't recommend it, because you will probably induce a leak. It might be worth grabbing an O-ring, just to be on the safe side, in case you do end up disturbing it, or it starts weeping, but I'd rather leave as is. As a result, this bolt here you can only get to with a 10mm spanner. The other two is the uh, socket and extension. This helps you preset the tools to the right direction, doesn't it? I'm not using worn out stolen tools from work. Right, I'll see if the camera can get this. You might go upside down in a moment. Right, if it'll focus, you might be able to make out that there's two bolt heads near each other. Obviously, it's the one in the thermostat, so just make it right up. Be careful of the other one. The other one is an 8mm. I shall get on with it. Right, three bolts are out. And we can carefully now remove this out of the way to reveal the thermostat itself. My one has had a hole drilled in the top of it to aid bleeding. That is a, probably a mistake. I wouldn't recommend doing that now that I know how the system works. There's the second diaphragm. That uh, I'll show you if I remember when the radiator's out, it engages with the recirculating passageway within the engine. And a rather lacquered oversized O-ring. Right, I'm now going to progress with removing the uh, water pump. First job is to remove the pulley. I'm going to undo these four, not take them all the way out because I also need to get the tension off the belt to relieve the pulley as well. First of all, I'll use that tension to hold it straight whilst I undo the nuts. And again, it's 10 mil, but uh, no extension bar this time. Because we don't want to risk poking the radiator. Put on two ends again. Should be able to undo without having to hold the pulley with the belt still in place. Oh. Got a bit of wind. That's not going to do with me loosening the poly bug. That's false. That's just a coincidence. Actually, I'm going to take these all four bolts fully out before I relieve the tension and pop the pulley out of position unless it rocks. I have last bolt and it's just starting to come out of position now, which is fine. Get the bolt out without losing it. There goes the socket. So there's tension coming off. I'm going to have to use a tire lever. Under the tensioner, push down on either end. You can damage this area, so be careful with it. We're just going to take enough tension off to pop the pulley off. And down goes the phone. Pulley off. Right, now I'm going to put all these bolts in a safe place. So. Pulley bolts back in. Actually, pulley bolts and just go in. Pulley. Very 
I don't need to see all this. You know, I do this kind of shit. I'm just gonna shovel this off in the boot a moment. Right, a bit of snag. When that 10 mil socket fell down, that hole it disappeared into the abyss. And I haven't got my magnets or any other retrieval tools to find the bloody thing and fish it out. But anyway, focus is everything. There's a the water pump. You can see there's four mountain bolts, a couple more on the other side. Obviously, just loosen those off or take them out. You notice between them each side, there's a third hole here. Once you've got the bolts out, you put one of these into each of those holes, finger tight them in until they contact the block, and then you just wind turn each side at a time and it pushes the water pump out of position. You should find that once the stiction breaks, you can just get hold of it and pull it out anyway. And that's it. Reverse, rebuild is reverse. Just make sure that uh, you mount this right way around. I don't think you can go any more than just one way around. But there's like a, there's a cylindrical lump around this area on the underside, which contains the bearing weep or seal weep hole. Uh, so that goes to the bottom. I'll see if I can get a picture on the phone if it will focus. Didn't like it. So anyway, I'm going to carry on and take my radiator out now. If the tool reappears whilst doing that, I'll take the pump out so you can see it. In case you're interested, take the radiator out. You need to take the top panel off the four bolts to each side. One of mine's been missing ever since I bought it. Just been taking the grill off because it's underneath it because it overlaps top of the radiator. The radiator also has a bolt in each bottom corner going that way, one either side, so skew it in place. Other than that, once they're out, it just slides up. Anyway, I'll get on with it. Well, that's the grill and the top panel, slam panel off. As you can see, it's the full top of the cooling pack. That being your intercooler, air conditioning condenser, and down there, underneath the intercooler, is the oil cooler. Oh, well, you can really see it. But anyway, time to lift this thing out. Out. Again, with a more scarce and a viscous fan. So we can get a better look at the front of the water pump. Not really. Well, you can see, oh, there we go. You can see the cylinder I was referring to under there as it loses focus. And there's the extraction bolt hole. Before I forget, I'll see if I can get in on the, um... Right, it's where Thimsad sits, ignoring the colour. That there uh, is a face that the back of the thermostat pushes against to stop the circulation straight through the block and force it through the radiator. And up there is the other pipe I mentioned previously. Whereas the 8 mil, I did not really don't want to undo by mistake. Right, I got lucky. 10 mil socket. All four bolts out, and one bolt repositioned in each of these uh, instruction lugs. Yours probably won't go as finger tight as this, mine's been apart so many times, it's uh, taken all the uh, build of crud and corrosion out, and I probably won't even need to do this. Nice shot at the back of my hand. So 
we screw in a couple of turns each side to keep it level and it pushes on the mason face and extracts it. I know for a fact if I get hold of the end of this, I can wiggle it out. And that's the, uh, the weep hole for the seal, which is supposed to be at the bottom. You can see the little witness marks and the lugs that has been extracted in the past over the years. And if I put the light on, you can see inside. That channel there leads up to the heat return pipe and the thermostat. And there's the intake to the pump, and the impeller blows it out around the engine block. And when the thermostat's closed, it recirculates to that port there, pushing against the uh, rear diaphragm, against the light spring. When the thermostat opens, that gets closed off, as the bigger diaphragm pushes that one shut, forcing it to go around the block, and then out the top hose instead, through to the radiator. And there you have it. Refitment is a reversal of removal. Good luck.